Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today we are totally checking out one of my most favorite Ninja Turtle characters and figures, the 1990s Playmates Toys Wingnut and Screwloose, one of the most standout from that line. I remember playing with this thing, just, yeah, it was my favorite. Yeah, it was so cool to have a Batman type figure within the Ninja Turtles, right? He came the little mosquito sidekick screw loose. Couldn't beat it. And it was the packaging back in the day. All the different artworks, the little sayings, fangs don't fail me now. It was just something cool, something special back then. It was goofy. It was wild. They did appear on the old 80s Ninja Turtle cartoon. They were space invaders that wanted to take over a kid's military school and brainwash them. Sure, why not, right? And they did resemble the toys, which did work. Not all the time did they coincide like that. But we'll get into more Wingnut and screw loose appearances here and there, and also my favorite versions. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look back at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Wingnut and screw loose Playmates Toys figure from 1990. And while I got you guys here, I just want to say thanks so much for checking out my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. And if you're a big fan of, let's say, retro action figures, toy biz, things of that nature, I think you're going to like it around here. I also do daily news updates, especially over my Instagram, pre-orders, all that jazz. So be sure to check it out. Do the whole liking and whatever else. Anyways, let's talk about this. So basically, just to kind of deconstruct this figure before we start looking at it, multiple accessories make up this toy, especially with Screwloose, basically being a unpainted accessory, so to speak. But the sculpts were there back in the day. They were crazy looking. I mean, could you imagine this thing painted all the bumps and the spikes, his wings, his tail, the wife beater, his guts. It's like the crazy eyes, man. They just went to town. The accessories also included a really cool Batman-inspired belt. You got dynamite, a, a bat, I guess, maybe a dead bat, a pouch, and then a little front bat symbol, of course. His wings were great. A little bit of paint there on the front, but you could see the rivets. You could tell that this was a machinery-type wing, not necessarily organic, and you could see the actual bat wings do go to the back of the wing, but they are unpainted, and that coincides with Wingnut's sort of backstory. The gun is very cool as well, a little bat face on the front, and you'll notice a little hole right there that will allow you to clip this onto the front of the wing. Just makes it for some nice weapon storage, and overall just a nice looking toy. Same thing with the little grenade hole on the back of it fits onto the wing, but the figure itself, again, like screw loose, the joke is always that, yo, know, they're all so over-sculpted, but they're fantastic. Look at the details that they go into on this face. He did have head rotation as well, just sort of swiveled. I love the tongue sticking out, the giant nose, the bat ears, the mask, the giant red eyes. It's just great. He had some shoulder and basically the legs move. That, that was it. I love his gut, the little torn part on his belly. His tail is basically shoved into his jumpsuit. If it was painted, you could say it's kind of sticking out. In really just attaching everything, the belt would slip on and hooks in there with the peg and it stays on really nicely. It goes and kind of hides his gut. The wings simply just peg into his back and they snap in nicely and they can rotate up and down. This is minimum articulation, of course, but it works. You can have them up, you can have them down, the grenades, the guns sits on his wings, and you put old screw loose right on his back. And when you have everything connected on the figure, it just looks awesome. He's just so cool looking. He's complete. Slap some paint on that screw loose figure, it would have just been icing on the cake. It would have been fan fantastic, but I love the articulation of the wings. The belt is amazing. It's simple and detailed all at the same time. And of course, when you do put him with other Playmates Ninja Turtles figures, they all fit together. They're also detailed and goofy and monstrous. They have tattered clothes and armor plating and rivets and you can see every little detail. And that's really why these Playmates toys figures hold up as well as they do now. In terms of scaling with say what's coming out nowadays, the DC Direct Michelangelo Ninja Turtles in general, they kinda sorta fit. The same thing with NECA toys. Now let me tell you, if NECA, being that they're doing their amazing cartoon turtles at Target, 
I would love to see, as corny as it is, I would love to see them tackle Wingnut and Screwless. It's bound to happen. If they wanted to go the more video game route, of course, you know, Slash, Leatherhead, they all look great. But while they are doing the Turtles in Time, if they wanted to branch out at any time, just saying Tournament Fighters, remember Genesis, Super Nintendo, even though Wingnut was only one of the consoles, he's in that game, and I would totally love to have a Wingnut to go with my Leatherhead here. One of the first appearances of Wingnut was actually in the Ralston Ninja Turtles serial. There was an accompanying comic book, and you can see Wild design, totally different, and he also comes with a giant gun to kill the Ninja Turtles. No screw loose, basically just wing nuts, but you can definitely see the start of the character. My favorite interpretation of the character will always be the Archie Comics version, Wingnut and Screwloose from a different planet. They kind of sort of fight the Ninja Turtles, but they end up becoming friends. Little mishap, you know, Cuddly the Cowlick, he, he straightened things out. And then of course, he evolved into joining the Mutanimals, which was fantastic. Ah! Except for that whole traumatizing event. God. There was, in the 2012 series, Kirby, April O'Neil's father, did mutate into a bat at one point. Michelangelo made a comment saying, oh, it's Wingnut, but it, it was not Wingnut. Wingnut and Screwloose actually did end up showing up on the cartoon. They were superheroes, and then they went full nightmare. It, it just didn't work for me. He's also been in the recent IDW comics as well. Also, the Mutants in Manhattan video game, Wingnut did make an appearance, minus Screwloose again. No Screwloose. Why no love for screw loose. If Super 7, with their awesome redoing of the Playmates Ninja Turtles figures, were to do Wingnut and screw loose, yeah, I'd be all over that, hands down. And they are doing amazing stuff, but um, um, there's only so much one can collect. <laughs> but in terms of scaling with the other Ninja Turtle figures from Playmates back in the day, they fit beautifully and they just look so good together. But I'm curious to know what you guys think about this Wingnut and Screw Loose figure. Do you have them? Do you need to get them now? Any memories? Any favorite versions? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Wingnut and Screw Loose. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, a bat riding a mosquito. There's nothing better than that. And the bat's dressed like Batman. Yeah. And the, there's a W on his chest. It's just, it's toy perfection. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.